Hello and welcome to the Fast Reports Academy. In this video, I will teach you how to use dialogues in Fast Report. I'll show you all the objects that you can use while creating a dialogue and how they work together. Dialogues are used to modify your report before it's built. You can use them from the designer application or if you're embedding a Fast Report library in your application. We will be using the master detail report. You can find it in the demo reports that I included in your installation. The report looks like this. It's a product catalog. It shows a list of categories and the products in each category. So, let's add a dialog to it. You can do it by choosing the new dialog option in the report pages submenu. As you can see, there is a bunch of objects that are different from the report objects. You may be familiar with those if you've used Visual Studio or a similar program to make form-based applications. So, let's preview the report right away, without adding anything else. We are greeted with an empty dialog. If we press OK, the report will be built, and if we cancel, it won't be. That's the simplest use for the dialogs. By the way, you can delete the cancel button or change its function in the dialog result property. And this applies to all of the buttons. Now let's make something more interactive. The text box object allows you to enter text in it. At this point, we did not set up anything, so nothing will be affected if we change the text in the text box. Let's change that. We will delete the default text from the text box and place a label. Labels are used to display text. And it will say report title. We'll also resize the text box and the dialog form. To actually change the report title, we should go back to the report page. At this moment, it says product catalog. We will delete this text. As you can see, there is a category on the right named dialog controls. And that's exactly what we need. We'll drag and drop the textbox1.text expression from it. And then we'll see what happens when we preview the report. So, we are asked for the report's title. Let's type list of products and categories. And now the report title is set to what we've typed. This will work with any string of text. Now let's set up something more complicated. We'll delete the text box and the label and drag and drop a field from the categories table. This will create a label with its name and give us a choice of what object would we like to add. Let's choose the combo box. And with no further setup, let's preview the report. We are given a choice of categories. This is how the combo box object works. Let's choose one and press OK. Now the report consists of just one category, the one we chose. So the dialog worked because the combo box was connected to a data source and the property auto filter is enabled. This can be set up manually, not only by dragging and dropping fields. So, we chose one of the entries in the combo box and that filtered the data that the report is based on. You can still filter the data with the auto filter disabled. All you need is to set up the filter for individual bands. So, we can do this even further. Let's add a product name field from products and choose a checked list box. Now we have a checklist of all the products. Data sources, products and categories have a connection, so we can do this. Set the detail control property of the combo box to checked list box. As you can see, the autofill property of the checked list box was automatically changed to false, so it's not filled with the complete product list again. Now, as you can see, the products in the checked list box correspond with the category that is chosen in the combo box, and we can check the products that we want to be printed. The same can be done with other objects. Let's delete our objects and drag and drop the fields again. This time we'll choose the checked list box for the categories and the data selector for the products. Then we'll resize our objects, place them on the form and make checklist box multi-column. And again detail control of the checklist box should be set to the other object, this time the data selector. The multi-column property allows the checklist box to work better if we want to decrease its height and make it wider. 
Let's now look at another object. We can add a checkbox to this dialog and name it Print Discontinued. Data column should be Products Discontinued, Auto Filter True, and Filter Operation Less Than or Equal. So, let's see how this checkbox filters the data. When it's unchecked, the products that are discontinued don't show up in the report. And when it's checked, the discontinued products are included. And here's how this filtering works. The discontinued field in products is compared with checkbox's value. It's a field that can be true or false, or logical 1 or logical 0. So in the first case, the checkbox is unchecked and its logical value is 0. If there is a logical 0 in the discontinued field, it is equal to the 0 in the condition, which in this case is less than 0, and so it fits. But the logical 1 doesn't because it's greater than 0. Then if we check the checkbox, its value becomes logical 1. And this time, both logical 1 and 0 will fit our condition. Now, let's look at another filtering option. We'll delete those objects and add two text boxes. We will filter the products that are in the customizable price range. Set the data column to unit price for both text boxes. And set the default text for them 0 and 500. Now the filtering. The first one's filter operation should be greater than, and the second one's less than. So, let's set the price range to this, from $20 to $40. And now you can see that there are less products in the catalog, and their prices are in the range. Now let's make a new dialog, and place it before the previous one. It will be opened first. Let's also drag the page after the dialogs. This represents the execution order more closely. Let's add a group box and a panel. I will shortly demonstrate how they work. So we have a picture box in our disposal. It can store and display an image. Let's copy it. As you can see, the elements placed onto the group box will move with it. And the same with the panel. The difference is in the visual representation. You can see the panel only in the designer, but the group box can be seen by the user. And you can set up a label for it. Next we'll proceed to the demo report Complex Master Detail and Groups. It's a list of customers and their detailed orders, with dates from 2013 to 2015. So let's add a dialog and place a date time picker and a masked text box. Date Time Picker lets you select a date using a calendar-like window. And Mask Text Box is a special type of text box that allows you to set up a mask for the text that is written in it. For example, this mask will restrict the text input to six numbers that can be converted to date. So, with those objects, we can specify a time range, like we did with the text boxes before. We'll set up the filter and data column for both objects and the default value for the date time picker. And now we can specify a range between any dates. By the way, there's a month calendar object that works as the window that opens when you interact with the date time picker. And you can set up minimum and maximum dates for both of them. Let's look at other objects now and some of their interactions. Now let's open the demo report with a cover page and add a dialog to it. We'll place a checkbox that will toggle if the cover page should be printed. Change its label and create a handler for the OK button. In it, we will change the visibility of the cover page based on the checkbox's state. Cover page visible equals checklist box 2 checked. So this way, we can change some things about the report before it's built. We are correcting the visibility after the button is pressed. But we could, for example, use the start report event. The grid allows you to look at the raw data from a data source. To set up it, first choose a data source in the properties, and then right-click on it and press Edit Columns. And in this dialog press Add All. This will automatically add every column. 
or you can add the columns one by one and set up each of them individually. Let's now connect a few objects using the script. We'll place a button, rich text box and numeric up-down objects. Buttons label will be add and will erase the rich text box's default text. So now those objects are on their own. Let's disable the user interaction for the rich text box, so we won't be able to type in it manually. Select the button, go to its events and create a click event handler by double clicking on it. In it, we'll write the following. A rich text box 1, text, plus equals, numeric up down text, and semicolon. So this now allows us to dial a number into the rich text box, an example of how the objects may interact. Let's also set the maximum value of the numeric up down to 9. Now let's pass the value from the rich text box into the report. We'll add a text object. So, as you can see, the rich text box doesn't show up in the dialog controls window. To show its text in the report, we should do this. We need the property text of the rich text box one object. So, we should access it just like we did from the code. Let's copy this from here and paste it into the text objects. And now this number can be used in the report. We can add a modifier to our dialog. So, let's add two radio buttons and set the first one to be checked from the dialog start. The first one will say button and the other one numeric up down. So, when the first radio button is checked, the numbers should be added after the press of the button. And if the second one is, they'll be added after the number changes. Let's now implement this behavior. Add a simple check in the button's code. It will add a number to the rich text box only if the radio button 1 is checked. And add a new event. Choose text changed in the numeric updowns events and create a handler for it. We'll copy the behavior from the button, but in this case we will check for the other radio button. So now, if we check this radio button, adding numbers to the text works differently. It should be noted that the radio buttons were automatically grouped. If you would like to group them manually, you can use panels or group boxes. As you can see, the radio buttons on the panel are in the different group than those on the dialog form itself. Note that it's just a tiny portion of what you can do with the help of the script. And lastly, there are a couple of objects that are meant to work with the code only. List view and tree view. For example, to add an element to the list view, we have to create some event and then in the script write this. List view one items add rich text box one text. And for this button, list view one items add in quotes text. So when we press one of those buttons, an element gets added into the list view. A complete description of those two objects as well as the others, can be found on Microsoft's website. And I will put links in the description, so you can learn about them yourself if you need to. So this was all for this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments. In the description, you can find a link to the fastreport.net objects playlist.